Today we're going to be talking about plain stress in general. So we've been saying that for a couple of weeks that this would be kind of the main topic of the course and in fact everything that we've studied up to this point has been a special case of plain stress. And so today we're going to talk about it in more general terms and just derive some equations for plain stress in general. To develop a little bit of intuition about plain stress from an, like an engineering perspective, uh, kind of the classic example of plain stress would be some, let's say a plate, although this is very poorly drawn, so you have a plate, and let's say you have some loads on that plate, and those loads are in the plane of the plate. Okay, so you have a flat plate, the loads are in the plane of the plate, and so normal to the plate, so this is the normal of the plate, you wouldn't expect there to be any stresses normal to the plate. All of the stresses are going to develop in plane, right? They're all going to be in plane, all the stresses. And so this is a classic example of a plane stress loading situation where you have some thin shell-like object, like a plate, with in-plane loading, and, and almost all the load is carried in the plane of the object. Another example would be, let's say, like a dome, for example. Domes are built from thin shells, and they're constructed so that the vast majority of the load is carried in the plane of the structure. Okay. So there are stresses out of plane, but they're very, very small. They're very, very small compared to what develops in plane. So this is a classic example. This is the intuition you should have behind why we're studying plane stress, because it allows us to look at structures, very common structures like this. If we look at plane stress, uh, let's, let's go ahead and... Um, look at what's called a stress element. So if we draw a stress element, stress element, okay, we're going to have, let's have a coordinate system x, y, and then z is going to be out of the plane. Okay, so we can draw stresses, this is going to be tau x, y, this up here is going to be tau y, x, the, the normal here is going to be sigma x, and then this is going to be sigma y, down here we're going to have tau y, x, tau x, y, and again, sigma x, sigma y. Okay, we're not going to draw any arrows that have subscripts with z, because we're going to assume that all of the stress components that are acting in the z direction are zero. Okay, this is plain stress. Plain stress says in one dimension, in one direction, in this case the z direction, all stress components are going to be zero. Okay, and so we, we don't even need to draw any more than this square with these components because this is everything that could possibly be non-zero. Okay, and so the way we understand this is, these, the way we understand these subscripts is for the normal stress components, this x corresponds to the face upon which it acts. So we call this face here the positive x face. This is the negative x face, negative y face, positive y face. So sigma y's act on the y face, sigma x act on the x face. And the sign convention is that a normal stress, sigma x or sigma y, is positive if it points away from the face upon which it acts. 
Now for the shear stresses, we have two subscripts. We have the X and the Y in this case. The first subscript denotes the face upon which it acts, and the second subscript denotes the direction in which it acts. So in this case, this shear stress here, tau XY, acts on the positive X face, and it acts in the Y direction. The convention for shear stress is it's positive if it acts on a positive face in the positive direction of the, the axis of the second subscript. So if we look at this guy, this guy's acting on the positive X face and it's acting in the positive Y direction, right? So this guy would be positive. This guy down here, tau YX, it's acting on the negative Y face, but it's acting in the negative X direction, so it's positive, right? Two, two minus signs here make a positive. And likewise for tau XY on this face, it's acting on the negative X face in the negative y direction, so it's a positive shear. Okay, so these sign conventions are very important to try and uh, be able to remember them. Okay, so now the, the main thing that we're gonna do today is um, develop the equations for stress transformation. All right, so we have stress transformations. Okay, and so what that means is if I give you sigma, or yeah, sigma x, sigma y, tau xy, and then some angle of rotation, you should be able to tell me the new stresses, sigma x1, sigma y1, tau x1, y1, at, after the stress element has been rotated through an angle theta. Okay, I'd encourage you to look through my notes. I have some additional details about how those are derived. Um, the result is that sigma x1 is sigma x plus sigma y over 2 plus sigma x minus sigma y over 2 cosine of 2 theta plus tau xy sine of 2 theta and tau x1 y1 is minus sigma x minus sigma y over 2 sine of 2 theta plus tau xy cosine of 2 theta. Okay, now Understanding exactly how those are derived at this point is not particularly important because in the next few lectures we're going to introduce a concept called Morse circle, which will give intuition behind where these equations come from. You'll be able to derive them simply. So at this point we're just introducing the idea of plane stress and uh, the fact that you need to be able to understand how to rotate a plane stress element by some angle theta. And we'll It'll be important, for example, to determine maxes and mins, which will be the topic of the, of the next lecture.